Hello, and welcome to another building tutorial video. Today, we're going to be talking about light maps and baking in lighting. Mm, 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 mm. Doesn't a tray of baked in lighting just sound delicious right now? So to start us off, I'm going to go into this dark room that I created over here, and I'm going to actually explain what a light map is in a general computer graphic sense, not a Minecraft sense, not quite yet. Um, but what essentially a light map is, is you take the lighting of different objects, the walls, the environment, everything, right? And you bake it, that's what the baking part is, into this light map texture type thing. It's like a texture because you would apply it onto all the different objects in the scene like you would a texture. Uh, but it's essentially saying how bright or dark an object is. And the benefits of this is that you run it once and you never have to run it again. And so you can run your game much faster because you're not having to recalculate the lighting every single frame, which is very efficient. Um, and the other benefit is, is that you can make it super high quality because you're only running it once before you're even playing the game. And so you can make it a really high quality render of what the light should look like, really, you know, realistic lighting of exactly how it would bounce around the room and all that. And then you save it as that light map and then you just load up that light map when you load up that level in the game. So really computationally friendly, um, nice on your graphics card and super high quality. But the downside is, is that it can only be used for stationary things because if this light were to move to over here, well, the light maps changed. That wall is now darker than it was and this one is now brighter. And so something like Minecraft can't do this, right? Because the light map is going to be constantly changing all the time. And at that point, you just sort of don't calculate a light map, at least not usually in video games. But in Minecraft sense, we're in this weird, unique place where you can calculate a temporary light map. I don't know if that's the actual term for it, but that's what I'm calling it. Whenever you break or place a block, um, it recalculates the lighting around you. And so it calculates it once, saves it, and then it doesn't have to do it every frame yet again. And the reason why this works for Minecraft is because every light source is a placeable block. You'll notice that nothing that can actually like move around in a minecart or a mob or anything like that emits light because it would break this rule of creating the light map once and then just calling it good. And so if you've ever seen those glow squids that don't actually glow, at least not properly, right? They don't create any real light. It's because it would be infeasible in Minecraft's current um, rendering engine of how they do the lighting very cheaply. And so this is a really efficient way to render the light in Minecraft because you are not breaking and placing lights all that often. You might do it once every second, maybe. I don't know, something like this, right? But that's that's pretty simple but there is a way that you can start to cause problems with the way Minecraft does it. Uh, a bit of a warning for this section, we are about to see a bunch of flashing lights, and if you are not good with flashing lights, uh, just skip ahead, I'll leave a timestamp on the screen. But the way to break Minecraft's lighting engine to make it not as efficient as it really is, is to make a bunch of lighting updates in rapid succession. Um, the lighting engine does not like this. It should not be recalculating the light maps every single time, every single tick, whatever we're calling it. Um, and so where this would only happen, you know, once in a little while, this is happening all the time and your graphics cards gets a little bogged down. In this small scene that I have here, honestly, not too bad. Your graphics card is going to be fine. But if you start scaling this up to a bunch of flashing lights and you have them all over your world, then you start to cause problems because you're not meant to be recalculating the temporary light maps quite so often. Now, before we get to the section of the video where I'm going to be talking about baking your own light maps and how that can help you build better, um, I'm going to add a little bonus section for weird little quirky things I found with the lighting engine. Um, the first one is that you'll notice that the outside light that comes in through here um, almost has like, it looks like it has a bit of a like blue color. I'm not the best at determining this. I think you would call this cool um, colored light. And the sea lantern over here has a very warm color, kind of yellowish, orangish, weird color. Um, and it's just kind of quirky um, that they're different colors. And the weirdest part is, because this is like, I don't know, kind of interesting that they're different colors, but the weirdest thing is, is that all 
uh, blocks that you place down that have lights are all the same uh, yellowish orange color. So that one obviously makes sense. That one's like yellow. But if we place down a green one, that's also yellow. And we place down this one that's like a, supposed to be like a purple, and that one's also yellow. Um, so everything's yellow, and you just kind of have to deal with that. Also, um, doesn't that look like a little face? It's got like two little eyes and like a little, little mouth maybe, or a little like vampire teeth. I don't know. Um, also, why is the lighting engine doing this? Why is it like brighter in these like weird little spots, and then it's like darker around, and it's like... I don't know what it's doing right now, um, but it's not pretty. <laughs> well, I don't know. You could call him pretty, this little guy. Now, if you're looking for a video that talks more about this kind of interesting colors that happen in the shadows, and especially on the temperature of different colors in Minecraft specifically, I'm going to link to uh, Mr. Goose. He's my favorite. His channel name is not actually Mr. Goose, but I'm just calling him Mr. Goose because I haven't heard anyone else call him Mr. Goose, and I'm calling him Mr. Goose. Um, Mr. Goose, he makes some great tutorials on building stuff, and specifically the one he did on temperature um, was super amazing. He um, explains temperature, because I didn't know what temperature really was, besides, um, I, don't, I don't know, warm and cold, I guess, but that's like not related to color, or it is. But see, that's confusing. That's why you got to go watch his video. Um, and he also talks about some fun stuff with the, the shadows in the game and also some like shading of these spheres and stuff and temperature related to that. I don't know. I can't explain it. Just go watch the video. But first, let's get on to the rest of ours. Now, another little quirk that I found in the lighting engine is if we go over here all the way to the edge of where the lighting is and we stare at the shadow, right? We just stare at it. Do you see the shadow changing? I don't know if it's going to show up through the YouTube compression. Honestly, I don't know because it's so dark in here and we're looking right at the edge. Um, so you might need to pull this up in your own Minecraft world. But it is flickering, okay? And if we go closer, it becomes less apparent as you get closer to the brighter parts. But if you just stare, you just kind of look, it is ever so slightly flickering. And I can prove this yet again if we place down one of these light blocks that you get from the creative menu. And you just look at just a one level, light level one um, lit block, and you just look at it, and it is slightly changing colors. Again, I don't know if it's going to show up in the YouTube compression because it is such a slight thing, but that means any block light is animated. Animated to such an extent that you can't even tell. I don't think many people have even noticed this. I haven't noticed this, and I played this game for forever. And so I have no idea why... Mojang decided years ago, probably when they did this, that they were going to have all block lights be animated. That seems like it is such a bad idea for your rendering when there's almost no visual change. There's no visual benefit. Now, for the last little bit of quirky lighting in Minecraft that I'm going to be talking about, um, I've turned off smooth lighting, and now it looks gross. At least that's how I feel about it. Um, but it's going to really help us show exactly how the brightness of different blocks is calculated um, because they use a method called taxicab. It's fun because um, nerds have fun names for things. Uh, and so what it does is it essentially creates like a diamond shape in the actual lighting. Um, you would expect this to make like a circle of lighting in real life, but Minecraft makes diamonds because that's easier to compute. Um, instead of Euclidean distance, um, which would be like proper circle, they are using taxicab distance, which makes this diamond shape, which you also see in like flowing water and lava in the game and stuff like that. So another little quirk that's not quite accurate to real life is that it's using a flood algorithm to calculate exactly where the light is. And the problem with this is, is if we look at the back of this block over here, that's on the opposite side of that one, um, Obviously, as we place and break this, this is getting brighter and darker, this side, even though it's on the opposite side, you'd expect this to be in shadow. It is sort of in shadow, but maybe not as much as you would expect. Now, you could say that the light is bouncing from here to here to here, and that's how it's getting lit up over there, which, you know, if this was real life, that's probably how it would get lit up. But if we move the light to over here, now how is this side getting lit up? If we're talking about real life, you know, it maybe has to bounce from somewhere often one of these walls and then it's like how did the light get from there to there and you bounce around the room and maybe it gets back to there and 
you could say that, you know, there's some diffuse lighting in this wall so it kind of bounces back weirdly right over there. And you're probably right, some light would get over here, but definitely not as much light as there is on here. And that's because the fill flood algorithm that they use essentially doesn't really care about proper light direction. It essentially just kind of uses distance that's like, oh, this is another block away, so we'll fill in over here from that block, and it's slightly darker than the one adjacent to it. And it's, without getting into too many details, it is not very accurate because this does not leave a proper shadow. So now that I've aired my grievances about all the different weird, quirky issues with the vanilla way of lighting things, we're going to be talking about baking your own light maps to make things look pretty and more realistic to how lights would actually work. So take this very simple street light that I made, and by very simple I mean it is extremely simple, but that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the wall behind it because I textured the wall to make it look like the street light is shining down below. So you can see the, the light reflecting on that wall. And instead of a normal Minecraft light, which would you know have light in all different directions around it, I can choose the direction that I want the light to be, which is in the downward direction. And because I'm creating my own custom light map with these textures, I get to decide things like that. You can also decide things like, what's the intensity of this light? If you want the street light to be able to shine all the way down here while still seeming just as bright, you can do that because you're doing whatever the heck you want. That's the beauty of creativity. And you can also then create proper shadows, which I don't know if this is a great example of the shadow, but this is what I came up with anyways. And so you've got like this little platform that's sort of in the way of the street light. And so it makes like a little dark spot at the bottom. At least that's what I was going for. Um, and so you can do that. You can create light areas, you can create dark areas, and this can really help enhance your build because generic vanilla lighting isn't always what you need. Now, this building technique isn't exactly new around the community. I've seen lots of people use uh, different blocks to create textures that imply light and shadow in their builds. Um, and it's been really popular across the building community as of lately. So not exactly new to people, but I thought I'd just share that in computer graphics, this same type of thing is done, but it's called uh, a light map. And when you're building a light map, it's sort of baking the light map. That's like the official terminology. So next time you're building some different lighting into your build like this, you can remember that you're baking which if you're at all familiar with the bakery server, which I am not, I assume that they're called the bakery server because they all love to bake that lighting. Now we get to my favorite part of the video where I get to show the technique applied to my museum build because that's just what I've been doing. And so we're gonna go look at that. So now for reference, in case you haven't seen my other tutorial videos, I'm gonna be showing my different versions of the build that I had previously. So first up over here, we've got the default version that has nothing weird applied to it. It's just a dome um, that looks very Minecrafty. Now over here, I applied an anti-aliasing technique to try to smooth out the edges of the dome. Um, and it looks pretty cool and stuff, I think. And then we go over here and we have an anti-ambient occlusion version of the dome, just a that dome, but anti-ambient occlusion. And then we've got the two techniques combined into one over here. And now we get on to the new builds, um, where I've tried to pretend like some light was coming off from this direction, even though the sun's right there, but it's coming off from this direction. The sun, it's coming down and it's shining and creating a little bright spot over here on the edge. And then it also creates some shadow over in this direction. And I'm combining all three techniques into one mega dome of doom. Now, I don't know if I did a great job with the, the shading of the dome because uh, I found it very difficult to find the right blocks that would actually do this. And the reason is, is because to do the anti ambient occlusion technique, all these have to be stairs over here. They aren't full blocks. And so that means that for whatever I was going to use to shade this build had to have a stair and slab variant, um, which there's not too many blocks in the game that actually do that, that are also green and can be used to shade this dome. So I use the brighter uh, oxidized, fully oxidized copper over here to kind of brighten it up. 
it isn't perfect, but it's what I went with because I think it's like the only thing I could have gone with practically. Um, and then over here, I needed something that was going to be a bit darker um, that still had some green in it. So I ended up using some mossy things. Um, this one, I think, is slightly darker than this one over here. Um, they kind of blend in, though, from far away. You don't even notice that it's two different blocks. So that's actually some good blending there. Not so great blending between these two. But if you were to look far enough away, I mean, it does kind of look like it's bright over here and then kind of in shadow over on that side. I think it gets the idea across. And, you know, I just had to try to combine all three techniques into one Megadome of Doom because it's just what I want to do. Uh, but I would love to hear in the comments what you guys think of my new dome. Do you guys like it? Do you think it's better than all the previous versions? Um, I don't know. What version do you like the best? So we've gotten to the end of the video, and I wanted to get real with everyone for just a second. Um, I wanted to thank everyone that's been watching these videos lately. There's been so many of you, and so many of you have subscribed, and I wanted to thank you all for that. It means so much to me that people have enjoyed these tutorial videos, that you guys have actually found the, the weird stuff that I've been talking about useful. Um, and I'm hoping to make more stuff like this in the future. Um, I don't know if there'll be more things related to computer graphics techniques that I can still pull out. Maybe there will be, who knows? Um, this is sort of an end of a trilogy because this dome can only take so much, so much stuff added to it before it becomes too much. And because of the fact that there's been so many people watching my videos lately, I've gotten to the point where I can activate channel memberships. And so I've decided to do so um, because I decide not to go the Patreon route, which I know a lot of people do. I decided to go through the YouTube memberships instead. Uh, but I didn't want to have people pay me a bunch of money. Um, I especially don't want people to pay me that, you know, can't afford it or anything like that. So I've set one tier that you guys can actually join if you feel inclined. It is just for $2 a month. It's not much. You can't go any more than that um, because that's how YouTube memberships work. So no one's going to be paying me too much. It makes me feel a bit better. Uh, but if you want to support me besides just subscribing and watching my videos and leaving comments and stuff, um, then join my membership. And with that, I will see you all next time in actually a very fun video that I'm doing with some friends.